you can catch him on NFL Network's NFL HQ, which airs Monday through Friday, starting at the ripe time of 5 a.m. Pacific, 8 Eastern. He is Terrell Davis. How are you, TD? Rich, how you doing this morning, man? <laughs> I'm doing fine because uh, I don't have the local Patriots radio uh, show playing in one my in my ears. <laughs> You had to go there, didn't you? Well, you what do you make there. of all this, TD? What do you make of all this? Man, you know, it, it, it's crazy. It's interesting that, you know, all this stuff seems to happen to one organization, right? It's like they seem to have the issues that nobody else has. They seem to be the one that's under the microscope. And you know, at first, when, when things like this happen, you would probably just sweep it under the rug and say, well, that's just a technical issue and there's no issues there. But because of the Patriots, you have to take a second look at it to see if this is another thing that they're trying to do to gain it, to gain some type of advantage. Um, I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I would think that after this whole deflate gate thing that the Patriots would sort of lay low and not do anything like this. And so I don't think they did this, if that's what you're asking. I think this I was am. just a malfunction. Yeah, I don't think they did, Rich. I, I just don't. To me, it's just it, the wounds are too – are too fresh for them to, to try something else like this. Well, but so then, then let's talk about what the Patriots did last night, and 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 how Pittsburgh had such a problem recognizing Gronk's uh, what presence. Sometimes <laughs> it, it was a head scratcher. Yeah. TD, how does that happen? Rich, there is one person on that offense that you just do not lose track of, and that is Rob Gronkowski. And I've seen too. And we saw it last night. There were plays where he is wide open. And there was one play where Bud Dupree, I think he, he walked out there on Gronk, and that was just a, a miscommunication on his part because he's thinking the zone, so he's trying to press Gronk, release, uh, get an outside release, and then he's looking back in the backfield for and he backs in the flat. Well, somebody in the backside, whether it was, it was Mike Mitchell or whether it was Will Allen, somebody didn't see that. And it was just a total miscommunication on their parts in the back end, but, again, I, I just don't know how you let number 87 run free without even – if you're going to make a mistake, make a mistake with three guys on him. Don't make a mistake with nobody covering him. Terrell Davis joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, what about the rest of week one? Which game are you looking forward to seeing the most? What else leaps out at you, TD? Well, that Detroit-San Diego game, I'm sort of looking at it. I got my eyeballs on that because I've, I've – Pick Detroit, and I know it's we have to pick our champions. Our rich, you know that. Sure. Pick, and uh, representing the, um, uh, I, I had them representing the for them to, to go and. All right, go ahead and drop them. We'll, we'll get them right back on the phone line. TD's. Uh, we had communication issues right there. I think the, Zolak. The cut irony. Off. The irony of, of, of all of that. At least you just heard him basically say that he doesn't believe that. So mark him down as a no also here on the program. Law's going about to call him back right It also here. sounded like he was taking the Lions to win the NFC. Is it's, that what he was it, saying? He's mentioning choosing a champion. Okay, we, we're going to try him again. He's back. He sounded good there, so hopefully we, uh, we don't have any issues. <laughs> Are, were you going for the Lions as your NFC champion, TD? Were you no, saying no, that? No, I, I said the NFC North Okay, champion. okay. All right. <laughs> so you like the Lions so I, to win that division, then? Why? I do. I, I do. I think this this is the year that the, the talent is there, and it's been for the past two years. I think this is the year they finally put it all together. I think Jim Caldwell, uh, I think they have the ability with Tate, and you've got uh, Calvin Johnson. you got to love Amir Abdullah. I, I think you, you've got to like their chances. Um, I think they're, they, they're a more complete team. And this is the year they put them together. I know in Dominican Sioux is in Miami. I get all that. But you got to love uh, DeAndre Levy. He's just a heck of a linebacker. Tolick is back this year. He missed some time last year with injuries. But the back end with Glover Quinn, I just like this team, man. And sometimes you just get a hunch, Rich, right? You just feel like you, you get a hunch about a team. Yes. And I feel, I feel good about Detroit this year. Okay. Uh, I've got Terrell Davis here on the program. The running attack in um... – in Dallas, everyone seems to think that because that line is so good, you just uh, just insert running back there. What do you stand on that, Terrell? <laughs> Rich, you know how I feel about people who talk about systems, right? Oh, you, yes, I do, you, sir. <laughs> oh, yes. That's that's a four-letter word. The system's a four-letter word for you. So is the word oh, okay. Olandis. Olandis is a four-letter word. <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? You had to go there. 
listen, I, I've said this before. Dallas, they have a good line. There's, there's no question about it. But if I have to use the analogy, and I've used this before, the line in a system is like a car, right? And, and the engine of a car would be the line in the system. The tires are the running backs. And if you have a great engine and you got some, some, just some dud tires, it's not going anywhere. The car is going to say, if you don't have dud tires and you're in the mud, you ain't going nowhere, but you know that. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have the high-performance tires, it just, it just doesn't work. So Dallas has a good engine. They don't have tires on that engine, on that car. Uh, but the one do I, I think that could possibly give them that, if McFadden is healthy, if, if he's healthy, I, I still believe in his abilities. But, I, but the fact that we haven't seen him healthy in a number of years, you can't count on him. So the other guys back there, Lance Dunbar, Joseph Rando, I know they got Christian Michael from Seattle. Um, I'm, I'm not, I haven't seen those guys do it before, so I'm not inclined to say they can do it. Terrell Davis joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So what about your Broncos? What do you think about the Broncos' chances of getting back to the Super Bowl this year with Peyton in what uh, could be his final season in the NFL, TD? Well, this is a total homer pick on my end and a total emotional pick. It's, it has nothing to do with uh, the way I, I think about them. I, Emotionally and the homer pick, I think they'll do well. I think they'll still win the AFC West. They're still the best team there. All right, now go with the brains. Now go with the temples. What's between the temples with what you're seeing? Uh, yeah, what I'm seeing is I think this team is good. They're not going to be – they'll probably still win the West, but I don't know if they're going to be able to, to advance in the playoffs like everybody who's in, in Bronco Nation, who, you know, they're expecting them to do. Why? I still have – because I still have, I number one, have concerns about the offensive line. I know they brought in Evan Mathis. Their uh, right guard, or left guard, um, he's, a, he's a solid player. But you still got the centers that's fairly young and paradis. Um, You know, the left tackle and uh, Tyson Brylow is very young. He's a rookie. You, know, you still have to mess it up with Peyton Manning. And can he function in the offense that, listen, a big part of the offense is, is bootleg. It's a lot of play action, rolling out the backside, hitting the deep crossing routes. It's all predicated on movement and making the run game and the passing game seem as one. So I have some, some concerns about that happening. Uh, I have no issues about their defense. Their defense is going to be a top-five defense. It's always been. So that, that's, a, that's a, the challenge I'm having there. And then C.J. Anderson, I like him as a back, you know, but he, he, he only has eight games of, uh, of really work, a sample size. Can he do it over a 16-game season? You know, those are questions, but they're not they're – not, ones that they can't overcome as the season progresses. So who's your Super Bowl pick? What do you got for that, Super Bowl 50? Well, my, I told you my heart my heart has Denver over Green Bay, but my mind my mind says it's going to be Indy. Indy's going to play uh, the Packers. So heart, heart with Denver, mind says uh, it's going to be Indy over Green Bay. And based on your lines pick, you mean that Green Bay would make it as a wild card and make it all the way to the Super Bowl? That is true. They uh, have them as, as a fifth seed, by the way. Okay, good. <laughs> see, I'm trying to put the pieces yeah. together, Terrell. Yeah, I, I see you. I see you. I see you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> you do realize that regardless of uh, all the great things that you have done in your career, um, the one of the greatest uh, things that, that's ever happened to you was you were there the day the 40-yard dash of mine at the Combine was born. You were the one. I, who, I know I challenged you, man. Well, yeah, I don't think you challenged me. Uh, I said, I'm thinking we were bored out of our minds waiting to shoot total access in the RCA Dome. And I said to you, how fast do you think I can run the 40? And you said, what do you mean? And I said, right now, how fast do you think I can run the 40? And you laughed. <laughs> that laugh. That one right that there. Mo- <laughs> that motivated you. That motivated you. Did. Well, then you told me that you, you, you then told me, yeah, that I couldn't really do it. And then I did it, right? That happened that day. Yeah, but see, and look what happened to you, right? Look what happened. Now this thing has mushroomed into its own identity. It's, I mean, now every year, mm-hmm. millions of people can't wait for Rich to run the 40. <laughs> you, should, you should be thanking me for that, bro. <laughs> That's that funny because I had Holmgren on earlier this week, and he said I should thank him, uh, you know, for 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 actually or, – or for a patient be – he apologized to me. Because at one point, he, he suggested I do it again. You were the one who suggested I do it first, and he's the one who suggested do it again. So that's funny that you would say that, TD. 
Hey man, well, did you get better? Did, did you get better this year? By the way, I don't know no, if you did or not. No, no, right? I did not. Uh, the, you got worse. The, the fine wine that's been May- getting better every year was a little corked yeah, this year. TV. Yeah, I, I think Mayock helped you out the first year because mm. he, he he sort of slowed the clock down. He said you're in a five five point nine or something like that, but. Yeah. He was actually he actually pulled the the trigger a little faster than he should have. I don't know, man. He seems to be pure. That he if he, it is what it is with him. I don't know if he gives any charity on that front. But <laughs> hey, TD, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. No problem, Rich. Have a good one, man. See it. Is she at the shop? NFL Network tonight with Terrell Davis. NFL HQ every Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience. <laughs> 